Brothers and sisters in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ, especially as 
members of Class of Zealand of the Christian Reformed Church in North America, we gather. We gather as one people to seek the Lord. May the Lord be richly present with us wherever we are at this time. As the pastor, pastors of Class of Zealand, nearly all of us, we've come together through the technology of Zoom in a recorded video conference, but really a, a time to be in a service of prayer and scripture and proclamation. And as with so many things these days, this is new to us, so forgive us if that's necessary. But may this especially be a blessing as we, though scattered and unable to be physically present with each other, are drawn to the good heart of God in Christ. And with that heart and the throne on which our good God sits, there is no distance. The Apostle Paul in Romans 12, verse 12 says, Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. And that covers our calling in these days, and certainly as we enter into this time of worship with each other. May we enjoy our great hope in Christ. May we patiently wait on our God in this time of trouble. And may we faithfully linger at the throne where there is mercy and grace. Let's now begin with a word of prayer. I invite you to bow your heads. Psalm 118, verse 24, it says, This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come before you in worship and prayer. Who are we that you should love us so? And yet you do. You have invited us to come together in corporate worship. Tonight we come before you, the churches of Classes Zealand, as just a small part of the worldwide body of Christ. We worship you, Lord, knowing that your love for us knows no bounds. Your faithfulness is ever true. Your grace abounds, and your mercies and compassion are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Lord, as we begin this time of worship and prayer, using new and innovative ways for us due to the difficult times, we pray that all we do and say will be for your glory and honor. Lead us and guide us by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Here, these words hear these words of about trusting in god from psalm 24 the earth is the lord's and everything in it the world and all who live in it for he established founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters who may ascend the hill of the lord and who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to an idol or swear by what is false. He will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from the God of his salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the King of glory. And as surely as David knows that uh, God is a God of glory, he also knows that God is a God that can be cried out to in times of distress. Hear these words from Psalm 27, verses 1 through 7. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and my foes, it is they who stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I have asked of the Lord. And that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. 
He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Let us go ahead and join our hearts together, bowing again in prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, you are the creator, the one who created the heavens, the earth, and everything we see around us, and the one who created our lives. Oh, Father, we thank you for your incredible creation and that we know from your word that we belong to you. Not only do we belong to you, Lord, but you are our protector. You are the one who keeps your people day in and day out. Oh, Heavenly Father, as we now um, come to this time and this season in our nation and around the world, Oh Lord, help your people to trust in you as we call out to you, as we cry out to you and seek your face. Oh Father, be with those that are going through challenging times, things that we have not seen, we have not experienced before. Father, we pray for those that are shut in their houses as singles. Lord, that are not getting the interaction with others that they are used to lord the ways that um this time and this season has been a particular burden upon them father may you hear their prayers may you commune with them and give them the encouragement that they stand in need of oh lord we pray for families and those families that are closer together now than than they're used to than is normal than they expect lord we pray that you would give our families grace you would give us peace and patience with one another father that you would give us um blessing in this different season the lord may it knit us closer together and father may we learn what it means to worship you in spirit and in truth not just on sunday but every day of the week the lord help us as we grow in those ways father we pray and lift up before you those that we're battling and have dealt with different forms of anxiety, depression, and Lord, other struggles. Father, we ask that you would be particularly near them during this time. Lord, give them the, the confidence that they need to trust in your word, to focus on you. And Lord, may you be their peace, their refuge, and their comfort in this season. Well, Father, we also lift up before you those that are in challenging situations, households that deal with abuse and other forms of wickedness that are not pleasing in your sight. Oh Lord, where home is a, a refuge for so many of us, Father, we pray for those that home is a dangerous place. We ask that you would be near them, Lord, that you would protect them. Father, that your spirit would be at work, causing even in this season, such wicked deeds to be brought to light and lord there to be repentance and transformation father we thank you that you are our rock our refuge and our redeemer and that no matter what we are going through we can always trust and hope in you lord may you knit us to your word may we cling to that firm foundation you have given us and may you receive all the honor and glory. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
scripture passages about anxiety and worry. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 5b through 7. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. 1 Peter 5, verses 6 and 7. Words of Jesus from Matthew 6, 25 to 34. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass in the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Let's pray together again. Father in heaven, as we come before you today, we want to say thank you, first of all, that most of us are in communities which have not yet been deeply affected by this COVID virus. And yet, Lord, we are aware that in the state around us and across our country and all across the world, there are many people who are and have been suffering from this illness and there is great fear and anxiety about it. And we're praying, Father, that we could rest securely in your care today. But we do pray for those who are ill and for those who, who have family members who are ill, that each one of them may be encouraged by your spirit today, that even as we've been hearing these scripture passages which talk about the kind of God you are, that we may see a mighty evidence of your work in our lives in these days. Father, bring healing, bring uh, freshness to the air that we may be able to breathe well and not be anxious about what may be in the air around us. Lord, we also want to uphold those who are in the front lines battling against this. We pray for doctors and nurses and other medical staff and people who need to be out there and who will be in contact with those who have this virus. We ask, Lord, that you would protect them, that you would bless them for the work of mercy that they are showing to those around them. And we pray, Father, that they too may be encouraged by your spirit in the labors of their lives. Many of them will grow weary. There will be so many stressed people with whom they're dealing. And we ask that they will be patient and understanding and able to bring understanding to those who are under their care. Father, grant us all your peace in the midst of these times and enable us to live in joy before your face each day. For you are the God of all creation. You are the God who recreates, the God who makes all things new. And we put our trust in you, in Jesus' name, amen. Our God instructs us in his word to pray for our leaders from 1 Timothy chapter 2, the first four verses. I urge then, first of all, that requests, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all those in authority, 
that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. Having heard God speak to us through his word, again, reminding us about the importance of praying for our leaders, let's go to him now in prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, in accordance with thy word, we now bring these petitions and prayers and intercessions on behalf of all those in authority over us for the sake of peace in our land during this time of upheaval and for the sake of the salvation of those who do not yet know thee in a saving way. And so, for that reason, we as thy people, we ask this, that we too, thy people, the church, might live quiet, godly lives in service to thee and to our neighbors. The burden of the responsibilities of our elected and governing officials is heaven is, is heavy, dear Father, in a way that we cannot fully understand to have been given the charge to uphold our state's constitution and our federal constitution, to have been given the charge to safeguard the well-being of us as a people, the responsibility they feel towards our health and well-being, the responsibility they feel towards our economies and our jobs and livelihoods, the responsibility they feel towards our education and safety, and then to make decisions, to issue orders in the midst of declared emergencies, which impact the lives and livelihoods of millions on millions of people who come from all different sorts of backgrounds with different belief systems, different ways and priorities of worshiping, different political stripes and passions, where no matter what they decide, they know there will be those who not only disagree, but who disagree strongly, bitterly, passionately. And yet, Father, in thy providence, they are in these positions of leadership at this time in history. This too is not by chance, but by the working out of thy sovereign will. And so we pray for them now. We ask thy wisdom and favor to be upon them and all those who advise them. We ask for a strong Christian witness and voice to be present in their lives right now and for the witness and voice of thy holy word to be present in their lives right now. We pray for Governor Whitmer. We pray for President Trump. We pray for Senators Stabenow and Peters. We pray for Congressman Heisinga and Amash and Upton. We pray for our elected officials in Lansing and Washington, D.C., and for those locally in Ottawa and Kent and Allegan counties, for the members of our military and police who even when exposed to danger and sickness and this virus itself are still serving for their acts of service and sacrifice and that of their families we thank thee O father so that through their work and service at all levels of government the work of thy church should be safeguarded the witness of thy covenant people would be enhanced but we need the work of thy spirit to bring this about, O Lord, and we ask that the work of the evil one would be confounded and undone at this time, and we ask that the gospel of Jesus Christ and the light of truth would, through the governing decisions of these officials, be given many responsibilities and opportunities to shine this forth. And so we ask this for the sake of thy holy name and for the furtherance of thy kingdom in this world, praying all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. And now we hear what God's word says to us about hope. From 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith 
more precious than gold that perishes though it is refined by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Hear these words from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his, Holy Sp through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know that this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Join me in prayer, please. Indeed, Lord, you are the God who can do more than what we ask or even imagine. You are the God of hope. You've been the God of hope for all of the ages, for all of your people. And you are the God of this age as well. You are the God of resurrection and restoration. You sent your son to restore, Lord, your people. And Lord, to eventually raise them from the dead. We are thankful for that. Lord, as the God of hope, we have hope as your people. We have hope, Lord, that you will take this crisis and turn it into good. We have hope, Lord, to know that even in this time when our families are together and we struggle with kids at home, as we struggle with isolation, that Lord, even in this time, you are doing good things, things that will help our faith, strengthen our faith, and put our uh, hope in you. We thank you, Lord, too, for the hope that we have as Christians, that we do not mourn, we do not shed tears, uh, as people who have no hope, but we are people, Lord, who have hope of resurrection, of life. We thank you, Lord, too, that we have hope that you can help us through this crisis, that as we pray to you, Lord, as we seek your help, that you do answer us. We have hope to know, Lord, that you listen, that you are our Father, you love us. We know, Lord, that you have hope, too, to take this crisis and this time, Lord, and to make it something of a time of restoration for your church. You have always done that, Lord, in the past, and we pray that you will do that again now, that in this time, Lord, that you will turn the hearts of your people to you. We have hope, Lord, too, that in that our churches, our own Christian witnesses may be strong. Help us to give account of the hope that we have in our own hearts. We know, Lord, that many people are living without hope at all, great anxiety. Some are even thinking and contemplating suicide. We pray, Lord, that you will send us, Lord, to people in our neighborhoods, our family, that we may be people of hope, that we may share the hope that we have in our own hearts with them. And we pray, Lord, too, that in this time, that your church would grow stronger together, even though we are apart physically. We pray that through the messages that are placed upon YouTube and other platforms, that people who have no hope, Lord, would be able to find the gospel message, that seeds would be planted and seeds would germinate, that this would be a new time of renewal for this country and indeed this world. Thank you for our hope, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. And our text now for this service comes from Psalm 42. As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? 
My tears have been my food day and night. While they say to me all the day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I would go with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God. With glad shouts and songs of praise, a multitude keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. My soul is cast down within me, therefore I remember you. From the land of Jordan and of Hermon, from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep. At the roar of your waterfalls, all your breakers and your waves have gone over me. By day, the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night, his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with a deadly wound in my bones, my adversaries taunt me, while they say to me all the day long, where is your God? Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. Psalm 42 was a favorite of my father. And the reason it was a favorite of my father is my dad went through a lot in his life and he struggled with depression. Let me uh, just give you a brief list of what my dad endured. He lost his mom when he was nine years old to cancer. His father remarried a few years later, and then he lost his second mom when he was 17 to cancer. My grandpa Vinwaldi, because of all of this in his life, struggled with alcoholism. And let me just put it gently, he, he wasn't a kind alcoholic. My dad had a terrible accident when he was 20, when he was working, and he almost lost his leg. And for the rest of his life, he walked with a limp. My father lost his only sister, uh, his only sibling, which was his sister, to cancer when she was 50. A close, dear friend of my dad was murdered. Throughout my dad's life, he struggled with depression. And I think that's why this psalm was such a favorite of my dad. When those depressive thoughts came up in his mind, he, he would read this and it would bring him comfort. As we read this psalm, we see there are several reasons for depression. Absence from worship is one of them. And most of us are going through that right now. We're not able to gather together with God's people in corporate worship. And that is a struggle. You see that the psalmist struggles with memories of better days. And he remembers what's happened before and it brings joy in his heart. But now life is hard and he's struggling. There's the trials of human life that the psalmist is struggling with. And for many of us, there are trials in life right now. And for some of us, there's more trials because of lost, un lost employment and life is difficult. And maybe some are struggling with depression because God isn't acting quick enough. God, where are you in all of this? Come on, end this. You have the power. Do it now. Well, when I read the psalm, what's the cure for depression? Well, there's no elixir here. The psalmist is blunt. He tells us, you wrestle with it. And you bring it to God. He says, why are you downcast, O my soul? The psalmist is bringing his hurts, his pains, his struggles before God. And that's what God wants us to do as we struggle right now. Bring it to him. Second, you do what needs to be done. 
And okay, we don't understand the future. We don't understand what is going on. But what we do know is God is faithful and we can put our hope and our trust in him. And finally, we remind ourselves that God is truly God. He hasn't changed. His love is always there for us. He's holding our lives, the state, the nation, this world, in the powerful grip of his hand. He hasn't changed, and we can trust in him. So I read this psalm, and I ask the question, is there a cure for depression? Well, there's help for it, and it's this. Seeking God and putting your hope in him. This is what my father did within his life. This is what this psalmist is calling us to do. How about you? Amen. Question and answer one of the Heidelberg Catechism is self-evident. What is your only comfort in life and in death? That I am not my own, but belong body and soul in life and in death to my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. He has fully paid for all my sins with his precious blood and has set me free from the tyranny of the devil he also watches over me in such a way that not a hair can fall from my head without the will of my Father in heaven. In fact, all things must work together for my salvation. Because I belong to him, Christ by his Holy Spirit assures me of eternal life and makes me wholeheartedly willing and ready from now on to live for him. We've heard many words of great comfort in God's word, and we've prayed for God's blessing. Let's now leave being reassured of God's blessing with this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you all and give you his blessing and his healing and his peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Close this class's prayer service with this prayer written by Dr. Cornelius Planinga. Shall we pray together? Gracious God, 
champion of the universe, we so often fluff ourselves up. Aren't we the only creatures who compose masterpieces of music and art? Don't we govern ourselves, enrich ourselves, promote ourselves? Can't we dunk basketballs, bat baseballs, spike volleyballs? Aren't some of us masters of comic irony? Other creatures don't practice rocket science. We do. And yet, here we are, frightened by a thing so small it can't be seen under most microscopes. It's not even an animal or a plant. It's a virus, a mere parasite, dependent on our own living cells to replicate. And yet it has shuttered our schools, canceled our flights, and emptied our churches. It has consumed the attention of our leading scientists wrenched our politics out of shape, dominated our conversations, and scared the daylights out of us. We don't want to get sick, and we don't want to die. We are afraid, oh God, afraid of a microorganism, afraid of each other. Great and quiet source of peace, quiet our fears, we are wary, uncertain, strung tight, quiet our fears. We have no idea what the future will bring, but we do know you will be in our future to hold us there. We cannot quiet ourselves, O oh God. We cannot comfort ourselves, cannot heal ourselves, cannot help ourselves. All we can do is wash our hands and keep our distance. Our rocket science is no good to us for this threat. Oh God, great and quiet source of peace, quiet us, your anxious ones, and let us cling for comfort to your suffering son, Jesus Christ. Gather us under his wings, remind us that he suffers with us, but he's also the great physician. In him, let us not be afraid. Please, let us not be afraid. Amen.